So, okay, we're gonna talk about porters and guys. So it's day 17. We're back on the trail again. On the trail again. Oh, back on the trail. <laughs> Why did you sound so depressed? <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, okay. So today we tried to make it all the way to Durali, which is maybe like a stone's throw away from ABC. Big day today, and he's tired, so it's not good. And his knee is fucked, and that's really bad too. I feel like my knee is in better shape than you are right now. Yeah, I don't think so. My knees are fine right now. It's my calves. They're just in stretch. <laughs> This one looks like a heart. Oh. You look like a douche. We have now reached the lowest point that we'll be at. We now have no more, how do I say this? Oh, uh, there's, there's no, no more, more going down until basically. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because I have so many of you seeing your back as we walk by, can you, can you record my back as we walk by? Yeah. Yeah. Can you make me look really cool too? <laughs> no one can make you look cool. Oh! Okay, following. Oh my god! Oh, it's an earthquake! Oh! 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 Too soon? Yeah, it was a little dramatic. <laughs> Take it back. Hey, good job on the camera skills. Nice. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan has a hard time getting it off. Oh! Oh. Dude, uh, you take it off. Dude, you're gonna rip it. You're gonna rip it. <laughs> okay, I need to sit down. This is getting out of control. Oh, no, 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 stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take it off. Woo. Oh, look at that skin. Ryan's showing skin. Yeah, ladies. He's single, but he works too much, so don't even bother. Hey. So you guys back in Pai, back in Thailand, there was a swing like this. I'll put the photo right here. Chris and I figured out how to make it go around and we took, it took about six of us. But these are really cool swings. If you ever find one of these, get a bunch of people together and figure out how to go around because it takes its momentum and it just continues to go. It's super fun. We're not going to try it though. It's right in front of this school. When you walk by uh, Gorzong. Gorzong school, primary school. Gorzong. So it's right by Gorzong. You're covered in shit. That's gross, dude. Yeah, bro. Shower. Jesus. He put his head down. He's like, I know. I'm sorry. Whoa, look at the horns on this guy. Jesus. Hello. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. It's, oh, God. That was close. I almost died. How many more, man? Come on. Come on. Hey, hey. What do you think, Fred? Should we keep going? Well, I don't know. Those people over there, they, I don't know what they're doing. We'll keep going forward. Let's Good. just try. Okay. Okay, Fred. Oh. They're getting closer now. What do we do? Should we go up? Just scared the human head. Oh, okay. Come on. Oh, uh, hey guys. Come on, Jeff. Just fucking hurry up. Uh, don't do anything. Go. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do here. They're scaring okay. me. Move. It's going to pass you. I'm okay. I'll move. I'll move. I'm sorry. How <laughs> funny that would it be? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Also sad. to chum wrong. Actually we didn't, we've been here for a while, we had our second breakfast. But we realized that getting to Diwali is virtually impossible today. And I thought that we were done going, doing the downhill things and just we're just gonna go straight up, but we're not. We're gonna be going down then into this valley, crossing over water, going over this guy. And apparently it's like that all the way. 
but we'll, go, we'll be going through this valley to get to the base camp and I wish it wasn't cloudy then y'all could see pretty pretty on on a Pernas instead of this dude's face connected. connected but I love his voice make him say something bearing maximum volume <laughs> <laughs> you want it that bad no, because I'm salivating for it right now. You guys, should we get the chocolate brownie? Answer. Let's try it. Okay, yeah, yes. It. Look at that knife. Someone's gotten a brownie already. <laughs> <laughs> no. Never again. It's too dry. Never again. Oh, it's really dry. But the frosting is nice. Oh, so dry. Hard to swallow. Really hard. Kind of really bad. Like, I, I don't even really want to finish it. God damn it. I am not need to put it anyway. I'm walking and eating because you suck. You suck. I gotta go to a check post. We keep getting stopped. I want to see who has been here. Australia, Slovakian, Russian, French, Dutch, China, French, Dutch, Iceland. Hey guys, check out this rad bowl. They probably added like semen or something to it. How's that semen taste? Glug glug. <laughs> <laughs> so much better than the ones in the States. Chris and I, we've just gotten to Sanua, 2,350 meters, and our goal see that little white building dead center just to get all the way over there that's another three hours away and it's two o'clock now yeah we're making progress well don't get close I'm zooming in we've gone 14 kilometers I don't know how many we have more to go but it's a big day today we're doing good here show them how sweaty I am Gross! Look at that! Oh, my so it's raining now. We're we're prepared, so it's not a big deal. But we were just up there. Now we're over here. Chris is taking a selfie of the day. That's a good one. <laughs> we think it'd be too hot to wear the rain jacket, so we just threw them over the heads. It's actually really comfortable. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Yeah. So that way we can keep on getting on. Ain't got no time to sit down and stop and wait for the rain. We on a schedule. Okay, so we've made it to Dovin. We made it here, it's four o'clock. We killed it, dude, we killed it. We have a room with three beds, technically. We've got like a queen size here. Chris won last time, but it's still gonna be fair. We're doing rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot, yeah. Okay, okay ready? Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Yeah! Oh, damn! <laughs> Boom! We're gonna eat Dalbot. Play some cars. I'm gonna show you what Dalbot is. It's actually what everyone eats here in Nepal, all the locals. I'll show you the whole process of what it's like. And uh, I also wanna talk about guides and porters and give you facts about them and then just like my opinion on them. So uh, we're gonna go have some dinner. Okay, Dalbot. This is Dalbot. We have, always have rice. What is this concoction today? We have perhaps spinach. Some maybe cabbage. And, and some sort of it almost seems like a string bean type of thing. And then we have this guy. Is this the spicy one? It's lemon, I think. Lemon? And then we have this fantastic lentil soup for your rice. You mix and match and it's all a gravy. And we have the potatoes. Now Chris and I wanted to mention that the potatoes in Nepal are always to perfection. They are probably the safest, and most not, delicious. It's really easy to season with salt and have them be tasty. Yeah, these are solid. And then we get this tasty chip papad. It's so good, and uh, because because dalbat is uh, is uh, eaten so much throughout the locals, they this is a dish where once we've eaten so much, they will come and give you more rice, they give you more lentil soup, more potatoes, anything you want, and it's not an extra charge. You can really eat a lot of food if you get the dalbat, and it's one of the cheapest things on the menu too. The common local way to eat it too is to like mix it with your fingers and. Yeah. Eat it with your hands like that. Usually people eat with their hands because they don't have a utensil. Why it's called dal bat. Dal means soup, is what he said. Bat is rice. And what do you say the, the potatoes were? Potato curry. Potato curry, ah, okay. <laughs> and he just asked if we wanted more, and we said yes, obviously. Because look at this, I am devouring mine. Thank you, thank you. Woo! Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And 
how, how much do you think we found Dalbot for? Like 400, 500? What's the cheapest? We found it as low as 350. So, yeah, so it's generally the cheapest thing, volume that you get. You could just keep asking for more, they're gonna give you more. Where you're gonna get, if you want a pizza, you're gonna pay maybe $7, 700 and it's gonna be not this size. Oh, how do you reference that? Hey. My papa. Like that. From anywhere from that yeah. to that. I have seen some good size ones. Yeah, they definitely fill you up, but um, this is the cheaper way. The cheaper, and it's v still very, very delicious. Is he bringing out more uh, doll? Yeah. I love when they have cabbage in the potatoes. Why have I never put cabbage in my curry? It's so good. He brings out more doll. Just a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So good. <laughs> and pickles? Pickles. Um, pickles. Yeah. These are too spicy for me. Thank you, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, okay, we're going to talk about porters and guides. Chris and I are all snuggled up. He's all snuggled up. He's going to chime in when I miss something or don't cover something. Don't fuck up. I can always edit it, so it's just speedy. <laughs> we'll try and make this quick and clear, but uh, basically, since since we, we did the whole circuit, about 80% of people had a porter or a guide or a porter guide, one or the other. Now being on the trek to ABC on a permanent base camp, it's been like 100%. Like, I don't see anybody that's doing what, what we're doing, and um, I have my own personal opinion, but to give you more facts about like having a porter, there are a lot of pros, there are a lot of cons. Like A pro would be he carries all your stuff, makes it easier on you, you can go farther, during the day a con would be like they get tired very easily so so they won't want to go as far as you do and that all depends on your porter and how far you want to go and for example we met an Israel an Israeli group who hired a porter who the Israeli group ha ha took their bags off of their porter and carried it because they wanted to keep going farther and the porter didn't I guess it all depends on your porter it's all situational but uh, we heard of situations like that we've heard of porters quitting we've heard of guides quitting what's another pro for having a porter having a porter like they can go ahead and if they're faster than you they'll go ahead to the next town and reserve a room so that you hopefully you have a room guaranteed when you get to the town if you're going a little bit slower um a con i guess there's more pros to having a porter and having a guide having a guide is also very situational because our good friend that we're traveling with he had a guide he had a guide porter who was carrying and guiding him he wasn't as good as what the guy our friend probably had wanted and he ended up quitting on him before we even went over the pass. And uh, do you know the reason for that? He, I think, was just like too tired. Like He couldn't handle doing what our friend wanted to do, so he ended up quitting, so. If you want a guide or a porter, I highly recommend you have a recommendation through like a company or a friend that has worked with that porter or guide. There, there are pros to having a guide, like, like to have him show you Every, point out peaks and teach you more about the culture that uh, the Nepali culture. It's you learn so much more that way than the way we do, which is having to ask. But we overhear we overhear conversations at tables and guides talking to their their uh, their clients and everything. And okay, so how much does it cost? Ten to twenty U.S. dollars a day to have a porter or a guide, like one or the other. Well. Yeah, probably much. not both. You probably have to pay 10, 20 each for a porter or a guide. Like, a, and and a con maybe about for a guide would be like you are with that person for the entire trek, so you you might not get along with that person, which is horrible. And you're paying this per you're paying with this horrible person to be with you, like horrible person. They're they're all generally nice guys, but if you don't get along with them, that really sucks. That compared to your your uh, your trek throughout the circuit, and and everything is so well mapped and there's so many people on the trails, you truly don't need anyone to, to show you where to go. There's just, it's so clear and obvious. And um, there are a few spots where it's not quite as obvious, but there's usually someone nearby yeah. that you just ask, like, is this the right way? And, yeah. you know, they tell you, yeah, that way. Yeah, you, you're not gonna get lost. It's just simply impossible. You start walking the wrong way and you'll walk through someone's village and they'll ask you where you're going and they'll be like, oh, turn around, go back. That happened to us one time. And we didn't even walk that far. We walked maybe two steps. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say it's good for the economy? 
Yeah, no, I didn't say that. Most people trekking will tell you that hiring a porter or guide is what keeps the economy going here. Like there's to say that we're not contributing doesn't mean like we're we're harming the economy because we're giving all these tea houses our business and everything, but most people will give a porter and a guide their business and it's only ten to twenty dollars a day. But this is where my opinion comes in. This is where I start to get a little bit frustrated and that's when we maybe talk to a porter or a guide and we tell them that we don't have a porter or a guide. They it's only happened to me twice, but they were actually like sincerely upset that I, I didn't hire one and kind of were they were like mad at me that I that I did not employ them. Or employ one of their friends and then that's where like my personal job coming here I don't even have a job I'm here to enjoy this country and I shouldn't have to come into the country knowing that I need to employ somebody because I'm just a young kid that's also broke and I was taught to only bring in what you can put on your back and that's what you should trek with you don't need you shouldn't have someone carry your shit for you it's kind of the way i was brought up and ego aside i'm just saying it it feels to me like if i gave someone my bag it feel like i was enslaving them at some point even though they want you they want your business they don't mind doing it to me it doesn't feel personally right so it's a re main reason as to why i would not hire a partner guide it's There's so much we've learned on this trip about uh what you really need to bring. There's so many things that we should have just left so, behind. Yeah, so we're gonna do a so. video at the end of all this explaining to you what you truly need and what you truly do not need so that you can just carry a 30 liter, 35 liter bag with you and be totally straight, at least in the month of October. The seasons really determine what you bring and what you don't. Basically, everyone gets a porter or a guide. Literally, 95% of people have a porter or a guide. I personally just like to carry on my own shit. So it's just a personal opinion. I get to save money and know where all my shit is and it's more of a, I think it's nice to know that you can pack in and pack out everything you need without having to rely on anybody else. I'm just a cheap skate. He's cheap. Which is kind of, 10 to 20 bucks a day is kind of expensive. Builds up. 17 yeah, that, days. That's, that's what our food and accommodation budget is. Yeah. So that's basically doubling what I budgeted for. Yeah, $600 so. $600 for one month was my budget. So if I were to do a porter guide for this, I would be up to $1,200, which is a lot of money. Double, double the money, yeah. And you just don't need it. Yeah. It's I'm strong. My quads are like, boom, right now. So, okay, another thing. So this is, we were saying earlier, this is probably the most luxurious three-week trek of anywhere in the world that you can go. When you have a hot shower an hour away, you have Wi-Fi, you have electricity, you can... You could bring all your gear, you can have a Snickers bar whenever you want, or Sprite around the next corner. You could you could take days doing this trek and carrying like 150 pounds with you and just go two hours a day. Like you just, you can go so slow, you don't need to hire someone to carry your shit. You just go slower. Or, well, you don't even need to bring 150 pounds. Like you bring the bare minimum. You don't need to bring a stove. You don't need to bring your own food. You don't need to bring like, anything. You don't need to bring a tent. Yeah. Like, and we'll go over this at the end. You don't even need to bring a sleeping bag. I think I think a sleeping bag is necessary, but we'll go over this in another video. This is already too long of a video, so I'm gonna cut it off. Um, leave a comment below if you think we're being cheap and fucking up the economy, or if you think it's just our own opinion and doesn't really matter. We're just trying to give you factual evidence of what it's like to hire a porter or a guide who has it, what what are the pros and cons. We're just trying to give you all that information. You can make your own decision, I don't give a fuck. Anything you need to say? Okay, bye. Then we're gonna make it to ABC. It's easy as one, two, three. We're making but it, it really fucks up you Just knees. please, dude. I can't say anything with you here. Just go ahead. Fucking A.